wounds that were on him. Okay? So, share with us, mommy. Who, who, what happened, how you met us, and how our relationship started, etc., etc. Oh, I saw posting you posted on Facebook. Like you saw us on Facebook. Um, in 2017. And my dad was diagnosed in oh, the end of uh, 2017 with neck and throat cancer. And he began with his treatments with Dr. Sarhill in Harlem. And as he started doing his treatments, he was getting better. And they noticed that one of his little toes on his right foot was turning black. And they said, well, we got to keep up with the treatment. He's got two more steps to go. After he's done with his, tr his treatment, um, then we can go go from one from one treatment, or you know, then he had, we're doing for cancer. Then we'll try to see what's going on with his circulation. Okay. So dad had cancer. Yes. What kind of cancer does dad have? Neck and throat. Okay. So he went to the dentist and he had. They went to do an extraction, and there was a, a mass, right? What side was it, Papa? This side. This side. Okay. So he developed cancer, he started getting treatment. Then he had an acute wound yes. on the other foot. And so she here she is, and I just want to applaud her because she's a mom, she's a wife, and she's an amazing daughter to this man. And yes, please, thank you, daddy. I mean, she's right for care because they had told her to amputate, to look look through text, he sent me a message, and is that twenty four? And, uh, and, and to look for care, this is a patient advocate. So he had a little black toe on the right foot. We did everything we needed to do. And he did Dr. Quintana's revascularization. We did, we did have to amputate that toe, it was done, but it did not travel upward. So that happened to the right foot. In the meantime, cancer is going on and everything. Then she comes he back healed. in, he, he healed, healed out. And he went again for the right more foot. treatments. He went back to chemo. And then um, the little toe, Oh no, the foot started turning burgundy, kind of like, um, uh, almost like the, the maroon kind of color, losing circulation. And uh, then he saw Dr. Quintana, I wanna say May of 2018, uh, for the uh, toe was starting to turn a little bluish, not too much, but he started trying to do new stents in his legs and he goes, okay, it's gonna be tough. He goes, I'm not gonna quit. And he said, okay. <laughs> I said, are you sure? Because I, I tried in Harlingen. I mean, we're from Los Fresnos. He had a cardiologist since 2012. But when he saw my dad, he, he saw his legs. He's like, there's so many knots. There's so many uh, blood clots. He goes, I don't know if I can do something. And I said, well, okay, so what do I do? And he goes, let me send you with a, a wound care. He's down the street. He's here in Harlingen. I'll send. Oh, well. Unless they fix the circulation, I can't really put him in HBO. I can't do any treatment to that wound. I'm like, you guys are taking too long. Okay, here goes another week and another week. In four weeks, the toe turned black. They couldn't do anything about it. And I said, okay, I, I have to come to McAllen. Well, I sent her a message. I go, is there something you can do? He's 71, young. And um, he still has a lot of life in him. I mean, this is a gentleman. This is my dad. He's worked hard his whole life. Um, Always busy, you know? He's not somebody that, of course, he's not physical. Um, but I mean, he was always out in the sun and, and doing stuff, so he's not like he was just sitting there. We all have bad habits when we're younger, and they said, oh, well, that's why, you know, oh, before he had his heart attack in 2012, it's because maybe he drank too much and didn't have a, a good life. And I go, okay, well, now we're trying to fix it. We can all change that. So when he saw Dr. Quintana, he's like, it's gonna be hard. I'm gonna start on the right side. And that's the leg that healed right away. He did that in March. That one healed, and then of course now the left. He did the stents, he did a popliteal, not once, maybe twice, maybe three times, <laughs> but he kept trying, He's not, he wasn't not gonna give up. And then in April, they did have to amputate Mr. Farias, um, amputated the big toe, and it started turning black, and I'm like, oh my God, I thought it was gonna get better. It was getting worse, and that was the 27th of December. And then he saw Dr. But it was one more time in January, and he's like, well, he goes, his hips are starting to turn a little blue. He goes, we, Dr. Q is gonna keep an eye on him. If you can keep bringing him to McAllen, I go, okay, I'm all right, I'll quit my job. I'll take care of my dad. He's getting one and a half left. <clears throat> so I started taking him, and then he goes, 
Going in, keep going to see April and what April tells me, uh, we'll keep debriding. So she started debriding. This is his heel. What Dr. Dr. Cutting was, was talking all black. about is that, híjole, when you go to debrief these heels, the bone's right there. So if you debrief too much, you end up, you lose a bone, you know? And most of the times, if you have a dead, dry, black heel, guys, you need an amputation because that's not going to regret anything. And this oh, is God's January. God's grace. This is January. That's time. January. And now this is. And this. this is him this past week. No, this is a couple of weeks ago. Okay, she knows I'm all by minute. Yeah. <laughs> I have like over 100. So how this patient went now, I'm going to talk real quick on skin subs. I'm going to do two more and then we're all going home because I want to see if I can catch my husband. And we're, we're pretty much doing the life. Of course, we're going to finish early. So um, <laughs> this is very important. I apply skin substitutes in the clinic. So does doctor in his clinic. Um, there's a lot, but I like the best. All of this improvement, you saw the before picture, now you saw this one, has been without skin substitutes, okay? Only about 5% of our patients will actually qualify for skin subs, okay? So this has been without skin substitutes. We got in here without skin substitutes. Gracias a Dios, this woman fought for her dad, changed his insurance, and we finally applied some skin subs. So this beautiful yeah. foot has skin subs on. Okay, but how did we get him from there to there with no skin subs? How did we get this man, are you getting that pic? From there to there. You see how large the wound was. You see the tendon exposure with no skin subs. And finally, how does a black heel, I always say God does the work, God does the obra, right? He does the healing, but we put in the work. It is, a, it is a team oriented effort. Right now he has a wound back on. I love that on top of, my, of our skin cells. But this is a, a one a, 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 a story of lucha, a fight. She fought for her father because there was a point when he fought for her. At what point does it become personal? Immediately. It should become personal to you right now. It should become personal enough to where if you see somebody with a black wound or somebody says, me van a putar la pierna, you say, have you gone to see this teeth? We're not the only ones, but we're actually having results. We're having good outcomes, okay? And we're a group. You can ask to you have an appointment with Dr. Quintana, with Dr. Farias, with Dr. Reyes, or with me. The point is we're gonna get you to the right place. We're gonna get you where you need to be. So we're not finished. But I expect this man to heal. And one thing that I tell all my patients when I see them is I expect you to heal. Do I always tell you that? Now, how, I don't know, other things, patients get hit well from other things when they go see us in the clinic, but I'm like, how did that mask go away? He's not even under treatment. No. He so, had, by the way, we don't have a picture of that, but he had a mass. Size of a grapefruit. But it was, clearly visible, so when you would see him, you'd look at his face before you would look at his wound. Mm -hmm. This was just a side thing. I mean, this was the main issue. And he started getting treatment again, started getting wound care, and then you would see him. And that's why, guys, positivity is very, very important. When patients go see you, have a smile on your face. Uh, the aura and the energy within the practice or the wound care centers where you're practicing, it matters if you're throwing stuff at your staff or you're belittling the, the, belittling the people that are assisting you. We are wound healers, we have a team. Everybody's important to me. From every MA, from the receptionist, I have Michael, that's, that's one of our right arms here, who's an amazing young man that has come a long way and he's grown so much in our practice and he's in college and he does so many things. Asperger syndrome, and he's an amazing young man. I wish I could clone him, okay? But everybody in our practice is expected to have a positive attitude. Okay, we're not perfect and we're very busy, okay? But we do our very best and we're positive with our patients. They already heard all the bad news. They already told them, well, you're already dying. Pa' que quiere la pierna? Just cut the leg out. I mean, you're not gonna heal, you have the mass. I mean, it, it's, it was pretty graphic the way, the, I was even worried I was gonna have to start working on a wound care for here because it looked like it was about to protrude through the skin. And for this family to come all the way from Falcurria, I Falcurria, I don't know my geography very well, but it's far away. And she drives him to the clinic, sometimes twice a week. And now that we're putting skin subs, we're doing that. And she, I, I said, you know what, I just, do you guys wanna come tomorrow and share your story? Um, 
Last minute, she said, yes, I'll pencil it in. She has a huge thing where she writes off her appointments. <laughs> and so, Effie, I want you to just share a little bit of what people told you to do and what you want the community to know about their choices. Briefly. <clears throat> and then I want Dad to say something, because she's his voice, but he has a voice too. If, if, if you see a doctor, and my dad had his doctor, he had a primary doctor, mm, 20 years, and he would just refill the medication. And I said, do you think maybe you know, the blood thinners or the misformance, something that you're giving him might be, maybe it's time for a change. And I would tell my dad, I think you need to find another doctor. And he said, no, I see him for years, he takes care of me. That's when you need to say, okay, if I'm, I just go and I see him, you don't wanna be a number. You wanna say, I see the doctor, the doctor knows my name. I mean, I'm sure you have tons of patients and the nurses don't remember everybody, but they see the patient come back and they're like, oh, he's doing better or he's getting worse. And we're not all gonna be family and best friends, but if you see that person, and that person needs to change something and, and you're gonna go and do that, you know, just tell them, go keep going, making the appointments. And that's what I did. I, I, I found you, you led me to Dr. Quintana, Dr. Quintana to Dr. Farias, and my dad is, I mean, because literally, I, I, I'm not negative, I, I'm very positive. You know, my mother's been gone for three years, I only child stepped in, I have five children, my husband works out of town, was working, I'm also a PCT, but I left my job to help my dad. It's not a burden, I want my dad to be healthy because really, he really likes to do stuff for the city of Los Fresnos, he cuts the yards for almost all the churches. And that's what he wants to do, and, and they're helping me, that now that that's healing, and hopefully the sub skin is gonna do good, and he'll be able to do that, he's already thinking August, <laughs> I can do that. He's like, in August I'm gonna go back to work. And I go, what? And he goes, yes. He goes, I'm ready to go back to work because um, he used to work for the school district of Los Reynos for almost over 15, 20 years? 20 years. He's an electrician, so he's like, I'm, I still have all my digits. I'm ready to go and wire houses, do electricity, <laughs> do some baths. And, and why not? And he's, so, and he's, from when he started, he was so skinny and his treatments from cancer to now, I'm so very grateful to everyone who's ever helped my dad, nurses or doctors. What do you want patients to know? What, as a patient, what do you want patients to know? Dr. Quintana, you're part of this. Come stand over here. Come on. Come on, stand over here. What do you want to tell patients? The patients are listening to you. The world is watching you. What do you want to tell them about wound care? That, that, do, should they cut their legs off automatically? Do they have a choice? What do you want them to know, Papi? The operation my veins. But Dr. Quintana never gave up. Never gave up. Never gave up to do it. Restore them another day and a half and do it again. That's what we're here for, huh? <laughs> so guys, the, the takeaway with this is, is truly, you have to put a face with a wound. They're not feet, they're not legs, they're not hands, they're, they're people. These are families. These are, these are, this is somebody's father, somebody's brother, okay? You don't go around chopping people up. They deserve good care. So, we can finish this one up. Thank you.